My kitchen cabinets have under cabinet lights, but I want to add lights above the cabinets and to light up the glass cabinets at the top. The project has two parts. One is running electrical to where it needs to be, and the second is installing the lights. If you're just interested in the installation of the lights, you can jump ahead to minute 550. So I have four existing sets of cabinets, each with its own under cabinet light. One here, one here, one here, and one tucked back here. Those lights are all tied to a common switch on the wall here. What we need are four new outlets, one above each set of cabinets. One here, 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 and up here. I know from construction photos that power runs from the switch up into the attic, over this wall, and down behind that vent hood. From there, it has a branch to the left and two branches to the right. And for the last one, power runs sideways directly from the switch to the light. My plan is to tap into the wire behind the hood, run a new wire to the left to a new outlet, use that same tap point to run a new wire to the right. For this set of cabinets, tap in at the bottom and run a new wire up between the cabinets. For the last one, there's a pantry behind the refrigerator, so I can tap in at the light and run a wire up through the adjacent wall to a new outlet. So that will give us four new outlets all tied to the same switch that's operating the existing cabinet lights. The wire we're interested in is this one here, and we need to run it through a stud to the left and then another stud marked by the blue tape. I'm positioning the outlet a little below the crown of the cabinet so that it won't be visible from the ground. Turns out a spinning drill and insulation don't mix well. They get along a lot better if you separate them by a piece of cardboard. This is 12 slash 2 wire that I'm running. It matches the existing wiring. I found a great wire place online. They were inexpensive, shipping was free and fast, and they let you select the length down to increments of 5 feet. I will link them in the description. All right, so we have a new outlet above the cabinet to the left of the hood. The process for the cabinet to the right of the hood is exactly the same. Drilled through the studs, ran the wire, and wired the outlet. With the power off, I clipped the existing wire, mounted a new box, and then connected the new wires I just ran to the existing wires. I screwed in some additional boards to help hold the drywall cut out a hole for the new box, and screwed the drywall back on. I did also spackle and paint it, although it's not going to be seen behind the vent hood. For the third outlet, the idea is to tap into the wire that leads to the existing under cabinet light and run that up through the gap between cabinets. Now, I am not an electrician. I don't know if running wire between cabinets is legit. I'm just showing you what I did. Running wire this way was actually a bigger chore than I thought. I used fish tape, rope, a helper, and a lot of patience. Using a spacer block, I'm mounting an external box directly to the cabinets. Back under the cabinet, we have a junction we need to make, so I installed a junction box. It connects the existing wire to the wire we just ran to the new outlet, 
and also to a wire leading to the reinstalled under cabinet light. For the final outlet, we're now in the pantry behind the refrigerator. This wire here is the one we need to tap into. This is above the cabinet, and kindly ignore the box that I cut in the wrong location. But this was the easiest of the wires to run, because this is a non-insulated wall, and it was only a run of about six feet. Back in the pantry, I installed a new junction box that connects to the wire I had to cut and the wire that I ran up to that new outlet. So onto the LEDs, I bought four boxes of LED strip lights, some connectors for where I'll need to cut those, some splitters that will let me connect multiple strands to the same DC power plug, and some extensions. Each box contains a DC power adapter, a dimmer switch, and then the LED lights themselves. Here's the general layout for running these lights. We have our outlet up here. We're gonna drill a hole in the top of the cabinet just behind the cabinet door on the side closest to the outlet. We're gonna run a short strip of LED lights just inside the cabinet trim up through that hole and a second strip in an L shape up through that same hole. We're gonna join those two strips together with a Y connector then put a dimmer switch so those two strands can be dimmed together. To light the top of the cabinet, we're going to run a strip in a U-shape behind the crown. That strip is going to be connected to its own dimmer so it can be dimmed independent of the glass cabinets. And finally, the outputs of the two dimmers will be wide together and connected to the DC power supply. To make all these short strands of LED strips, we're going to need the measurements of the cabinets, their width and height. To make a shorter strand, we measure out the length we need and cut it at the cut mark. The cut marks won't be exactly where you need them, so sometimes you just cut a little shorter piece. We'll use these short connectors to make this connection. You peel back the adhesive tape on the back of the LED strip, then open up the connector which exposes two metal leads. There are two metal tabs at the cut point of the LED strip and you want to slide those into contact with the metal leads of the connector. Then you snap it closed and plug it in to make sure it works. If it doesn't work, you can just open it back up and reseat the connections and try again. And for the way I'm doing it, you need three of these per cabinet. Two for the inside and one for the top. This is the cabinet to the left of the vent hood. I'm drilling a 3 8 inch hole tucked behind the cabinet trim, then feeding up each of the two LED strands that are going to light up the inside of the cabinet. You peel off the tape to expose the adhesive backing and then stick it down the interior trim piece of the cabinet, facing towards the back of the cabinet. For the L-shaped strip, it's the same process. Remove the backing, attach it along the top inner edge of the cabinet. When you get to the corner, you won't be able to make a perfect 90 degree angle. So just leave a little slack and make a curve as you come down the other side of the cabinet. We take those two strands, combine them with a Y connector, and connect that to a dimmer that controls both. For the over cabinet lighting, I'm running an LED strip in a U shape around the top of the cabinet. I plug that strip into its own dimmer. Then take the two dimmers and Y them together into a single connection that plugs into the wall adapter. Alexa, turn on the countertop lights. So this cabinet is done. We have the top lit and the inside lit and they are separately dimmable. I see in the video there's some flicker, but you can't see that in person. That's a function of the frame rate of the camera. This is the cabinet to the right of the hood and the process is just the same. 
I drill a 3 8 inch hole on the side closest to the outlet, feed up the two cords that are going to light the inside of the cabinet, peel and stick those, and peel and stick the one that's going to light the top of the cabinet. And again, wire the inside ones to their dimmer, the top one to its dimmer, and wire both of those to the same power supply. At this point, I ran out of dimmers, so I had to buy four more. I will put a complete parts list in the description of the video. This is the top of the next set of cabinets, which is a bank of three. So we have a set of three LED strips for the near cabinet, a set of three for the middle cabinet, and a set of three for the far cabinet. The LED strips for the near cabinet won't reach all the way to the plug, so I'm adding three foot extensions to those. And then I have a six-way connector that's going to connect all of the interior lights for these three cabinets, which is going to connect then to a single dimmer. Then I have a four-way connector that's going to connect the top lights for each of these three cabinets, and they will all get a single dimmer. And finally, we take those two dimmers, wire them together, and connect them to the same power adapter. This is the final set of cabinets, a set of two. I'm connecting the four interior lights with a four-way connector and the two upper lights with a two-way connector. Each of those paths gets its own dimmer and then the dimmers are combined in another Y that connects to a common power supply. And here are the new glass and upper cabinet lights. If you have any ideas on what would look good displayed in those glass cabinets, please let me know.